What is going on everybody and welcome to today's tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how we can start making our own custom tools within Unity. So in this video I'm going to be going over some of the basics of how to create a custom editor window in Unity. So if you're unfamiliar with these custom tools you're in the right place. Basically with these tools we can kind of launch a window and then it um, gives us a nice easy interface that we can use to do all sorts of complex behavior. So these tools are extremely useful for streamlining the development of your games because a lot of times in game development, we're gonna be doing the same thing over and over um, a bunch of times and maybe slightly changing values here and there. So these tools kind of take a whole lot of the repetition out of it by doing uh, a bunch of the time consuming stuff for us like changing names and everything like that. Uh, whereas we can kind of go in and just change the few basic parameters that we need to and the computer does the rest for us. So again, this is going to be kind of an introductory video just talking about some of the basic concepts of creating tools and everything like that. I do plan to go into much more advanced topics in the future, so definitely stay tuned for those. Um, but in today's video, instead of just kind of showing you uh, the basic functions and just telling you what they do, I figured that we'd make something actually you know, kind of useful. Even though this may not be the most useful thing in the world, um, but today we're gonna to be making like a basic object spawner. So we're gonna be opening up a, a custom little editor window, and then we're gonna be able to set some kind of parameters in there, and then spawn a bunch of objects into our scene view. Um, so I'll be going over a quick little demonstration of that in a second, and then kind of showing you how I configure that whole editor window. But before I get into all that, I'd just like to say if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more Unity tutorials like this one where I'm gonna be going into more advanced topics on building tools and everything like that. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future topics, feel free to drop those down in the comments section below. And with that, let's jump right on into the tutorial. Okay, so here we are over in Unity. And as you can see, this is pretty much a completely blank project here. So I'm gonna be showing off the tool that we're going to be making today. So our tool is a custom editor window. So the way we're gonna open it is, um, I've actually created a little menu item. Uh, so you'll see that we now have this tools tab here, and this is just like a, a custom thing. We can name this whatever we want. I'll show you how to do this in a second. Um, but we just have this basic object spawner tool. Now you can see it opens it up, and uh, it's just a window, just like any other thing that you might see in Unity here. Um, you know, you can drag this around. We can even uh, take this tab and put it different places uh, within our Unity project. And so this is really nice if you want to have it always open and you can kind of switch back and forth to it. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave it as a floating window. So as you can see, our tool has a couple of different parameters. Uh, we have a base name, object ID, object scale, spawn radius, and a prefab to spawn. And then below that, we have this spawn object button. So the idea is that we fill in all these parameters and we just click spawn object and then it spawns our object. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how this works. So we can just drag this test cube prefab into the prefab to spawn field here. Basically, the way I have this set up is we actually can't drag scene objects into here. We can only drag prefabs. And that's kind of a design choice. It's up to you if you want to allow scene objects or uh, just prefabs. So for, for the purposes of this, I'm just using prefabs. Again, I'll show you how that's all set up. Now with this object spawner tool, the kind of idea is that it sets like a name and ID, and then we can kind of set some of the parameters of the object here. Uh, so for base name, let's just call this like awesome cube. So for object ID, this is just an integer field here. As you can see, we can kind of scroll this uh, like we would any other field in Unity. But we're just gonna leave this as one now. The idea is um, every time we spawn an object, it's going to append this ID to the end of it. Um, so the first one will be awesome cube one, then awesome cube two, three, so on. So next is scale. So this is actually the uh, size of the individual object. So uh, we can just kind of have things just at like a regular one-to-one -one scale right now. And then lastly, I have this spawn radius, which is just a radius from zero, zero, zero on the map where we're actually going to be spawning our objects. Uh, so we can just go ahead and leave this at five for now. So you see that when I go ahead and click spawn object, boom, we just spawned our first cube right here. You'll notice I'm not even in play mode right now. This is all executing outside of play mode. Um, as you can see, we have this awesome cube one, which just appeared in our hierarchy here. And you'll notice that uh, the object ID has incremented to two. So the next time we hit spawn object, it's gonna spawn a new object, um, kind of still within this little radius that we have set of five. 
So we have this awesome cube one and awesome cube two now. And then we can just kind of click this a bunch of times. You'll see that we'll have now we have a bunch of different objects, we're up to 15. Okay, and then of course we can uh, kind of start messing with some of these parameters. So let's say we want a couple bigger ones. So we'll have one uh, just a little over two size scale. And you know, let's, let's really bump up this spawn radius to like 13. So you can see how this kind of works once we start spawning some more objects. So you'll see that the spawning radius is bigger. They're kind of being spawned out a little further and they're also just bigger cubes in general. Uh, so now we can kind of bring the scale back down and um, you know, let's just keep increasing the spawn radius here. And we'll just spawn a bunch more and you see now they're all over and we're really spread out because we increased that spawn radius. So the idea here is that we just made a simple tool that we can kind of set some basic parameters um, again, all we just need to do is click this button and then it instantiates the object, names it, changes the size and puts it in the right location. So it's really cool that we just have one little place that we can modify all these values and just click a button and it does what we need right away. Now I know this isn't the most useful tool, but you can kind of see how these tools are used um, as we start getting to more advanced things. Um, but you know, if we wanted to do this on its own, of course we could duplicate a bunch of cubes and then we'd have to go through them one by one, rename them, you know, maybe do a copy paste, change the, change the ID at the end and change the scale and position of each object. And that just takes a whole bunch of time. So we can really use tools like this to our advantage that saves us a lot of time of development. Now, the only script I have in this project is this basic object spawner C sharp script. And one thing to point out is that this script must sit in a folder called editor. Um, it doesn't have to be at the exact root of the assets folder. As you see, I have it in a subfolder here. And the reason we do this is because the editor folder is a special folder in Unity. So when we go to make a build of our game, any script that's inside this editor folder is not going to be included in the build of our game. So we need to make sure that we're not keeping anything critical to our game within this editor folder. And it's also important because any script we have that inherits from editor window, like this one, must be inside the editor folder or else we will get errors when trying to make a build of our game. So again, just make sure you're not putting any resources critical to your game within the editor folder and all custom editor window scripts must go in the editor folder. So now I'm going to open up the basic object spawner script and show you how it works. So just kind of starting at the top, the only libraries we're going to need to include are the uh, Unity Editor and Unity Engine libraries. So Unity Engine just allows us to do kind of basic normal Unity functions and then Unity Editor kind of um, gives us some of those custom features for opening our custom window. So as you'll see, the class is called Basic Object Spawner. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to inherit from editor window. And this is because that we're making like a custom editor window and it allows us to use a couple functions that we're going to need. So anyways, at the top here, we're going to de declare these five local variables. And these are just going to represent the parameters that we're editing. And it should be noted that anything that we set here is going to be the defaults over in Unity. So you see, we've kind of been messing around with these values. Um, but if we close this and then go and open it again, it's going to be back to the default values. So just kind of keep that in mind. It doesn't really remember where you left off. It just goes back to these default values here. So the first method we have is this public static void called show window. Um, this is basically what it, the function that is called when we open up our window. And the reason it's set to static is because we want this function to be able to be called without a, an object existing um, within our game. So that's how I was able to actually open the window even though I didn't have a, a game object with this script attached to it. So then to actually open the window, we call this get window function and we pass in type of basic object spawner. So this is just the name of the class. So whatever class you're using, you're just going to pass in the name of the class here. And uh, it should be noted that get window is a method inherited from this editor window class. So that's pretty much why we're inheriting from the editor window class instead of mono behavior. And now you may have noticed that above this method, we have this little line here that's encapsulated in square brackets. So it's a menu item. And then within parentheses, we just pass in a string um, which says tools forward slash basic object spawner. And so this is where it's gonna show up in the menu bar up in Unity. 
Again, we can call this whatever we want. So maybe we, instead of calling this tools, we can call this my tools. And we could even put it in like a subfolder called tutorials. So now if we save this and go back to Unity, where it previously said tools, we now have this my tools menu. And then uh, we can go to tutorial subfolder and then basic object spawner. And when we click on that, it'll just open this window up. But for now, I'm just gonna change it back to tools like I had it before. So that's basically how we get the window to open up. Now here in the on GUI function, this is basically where we're gonna be setting up the different fields and buttons that we're going to be using. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a GUI layout dot label. And so this is just a label at the top of our window, um, which just kind of lets us know what tool that we're using. So I called it spawn new object, and then I did did editor styles dot bold label and the reason for this is it just makes it bold just makes it stand out a little bit more and then so under that these are all the different fields that we're going to be able to edit so here we're going to set the variable for our object base name so we'll just do object base name equals editor GUI layout dot text field and so this text field is just kind of a, a basic little field that we can enter a string here. And then we'll put in a label of base name. And then so that's just kind of uh, the name of the field that we're gonna be editing. And then lastly, we put in a variable for the value. And so we're just gonna be passing in the same variable that we're trying to edit here. So the next one, object ID is pretty similar, but this time we're just using editor GUI layout dot int field. And of course, giving it a name of object ID and passing in the object ID variable. Um, um, so this just makes sure that we can only enter integer values into this field. Now the next one is a little bit different. This is object scale. So we'll do editor GUI layout dot slider. And so this actually gives us a slider um, that we can kind of move from left to right to select a value between two set parameters. So of course we'll give it a label of object scale and we'll pass in the object scale variable. And here's where we set the low end. So our low end is 0.5 and our high end is three. Of course, you can set these to whatever you like, but that just makes it so when we're moving the slider from left to right, it'll go from the values of 0.5 to three. So the next is our spawn radius. Again, this is just a pretty simple, um, it's gonna be an editor GUI layout float field giving it a label of spawn radius and passing in the variable spawn radius. And then the last one that we have is just the actual object that we want to spawn. So we're gonna do editor GUI layout dot object field, giving it a label of prefab to spawn, passing in the object to spawn variable. And we wanna make sure this is a type of game object because this is a game object that we are going to be um, instantiating. And then this last true false flag is basically um, where we can set if we want to allow scene objects to be put into this field here. So again, depending on your use cases, if you want to be able to drag scene objects into here, or if you just wanna have things from the uh, regular hierarchy like prefabs to be able to be dragged in there. And then lastly, we just have this as game object. Um, if we don't have that, we're gonna get an error because this object field um, is just kind of a base object, but we wanna be spawning a game object. So those are all the fields. And the last thing that we have is just this button that appears at the bottom of our window. And uh, the way we set that up is we just say, if GUI layout dot button spawn object. So this is kind of the label of the button here. And so this if statement means if it's pressed, what function are we gonna call? And so we'll just call the spawn object function. And the spawn object function, you can look through this if you want, but basically all it does is it instantiates an object uh, kind of with the parameters that we have. And then the last thing that it does at the end is it increments the uh, object ID so that we can kind of increment that from one to two to three to four and so on. So back over to Unity, one last time, I'm gonna go through this real quickly. So if we just go up to the tools menu and open up our basic object spawner window, we can drag in a prefab such as this sphere prefab. We'll do something a little bit different and we'll call this the fun sphere. And so we're gonna have these real small at 0.5 and just inside the spawn radius of five is fine. So we'll spawn a bunch of these. And that now of course we can see that our object ID is incrementing and we're spawning all kinds of these sphere prefabs. And you'll see down in the uh, bottom of our hierarchy, we have all these fun spheres now. 
So we have awesome cubes and fun spheres. So anyways, this has just been kind of an introduction to some of the custom tools that we can start to make in Unity. I'm um, just kind of going over the basics of editor windows and kind of how to set things up. So we're kind of all on the same page as we start to get into more advanced topics. And so with that, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, make sure you leave this video a like. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more of those advanced tutorials that I've been kind of hinting at. Um, if you have any questions or comments or um, topics for future videos, feel free to leave those all in the comment section below. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.